Many parents buckle their child into their car seat every day, but is that car seat installed properly? I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me this hour is Pennsylvania State Representative Cheryl Delosier. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. And, and that's a question that parents have. They do the check when you mm -hmm. leave the hospital, but after that, as the child grows and you change car seats, you may not know if it's installed properly. Right, and that's why we wanted to have, we're having a, a no-cost event for the district. Anybody that needs to come over and check will have folks that are licensed and certified in safety with the car seats. And uh, we're going to have it over on Mar uh, May 6th over at L.B. Smith Ford, uh, and we're going to have a lot of other things going on that day, and it's kind of just the capability of being able to say, look, uh, we want to make sure you're child is in right, not only are they in the seat, but are, is the seat in correctly, which sometimes people don't think about. So again, that is a free event happening from 2 to 6 p.m. on May the 6th. You're having an additional event, and this is something that people may not have thought about in right. the past when it comes to vehicle safety. We see the VIN number on the front of the car on the windshield, mm -hmm. but you say that that's actually a, a problem if the vehicle is stolen. Right. If the vehicle is stolen, that could be taken out. And so what we have come up with and has worked in other parts of the state, so we wanted to try it here. Was to, so if your car is stolen and they do remove that VIN, um, the etching in the window sh windshield um, allows for the identification of that car to validate that it's yours if it is ever recovered. So the VIN number is actually etched into the etched glass? Etched into the glass. And the company that does it is willing to do so as a, as a safety precaution because it prevents fraud and it prevents um, those that are uh, looking for their car and it is recovered, um, insurance issues as well. And you mentioned this is a free event ag is. as well. Where is this one being held? Um, this one is being held Saturday, May 21st, and it's from 10 to 2, and it is in the Capital City Mall at the end uh, where Sears is. So we'll have a big uh, area cordoned off uh, for folks to come down and, and uh, do what they can to be safe with their cars. Now, do we need to make appointments for these events or can people? Not it's, it's open. Um, whenever it's uh, convenient for you to make it over to either of the events, please stop by. Okay, again, the car seat safety check is happening on Friday, May 6th, and then the VIN etching is happening on May 21st. Let's talk a little bit about House Bill 927. This is related to child labor laws. Why do child labor laws in Pennsylvania need to be revisited? Well, first and foremost, the last time it was uh, looked at was in 1915. A lot of things have changed since then, obviously, uh, and we need to really just update the law as a whole, uh, using some of the terminology even in the law is things we don't use any, any longer. But the big primary issue for businesses is the issue that they have to comply with federal law and they have to comply with state law dealing with those that are under 18. So we need to make sure that those laws are along the same path because right now they conflict in many cases because we haven't updated ours since 1915. So we look for uh, the realms of kids that are employed under the age of 18, under the age of 16, 14, and 12, different thresholds, um, the different types of jobs that they can hold. So with the law not being updated in close to a century, does that cause problems uh, when it comes to employing young people, I'm, I'm especially thinking of, of summer jobs, which kids sure. can rely on? Sure. And a lot of the jobs that you're thinking about are, you know, newspaper delivery, lifeguards. Um, the YWC or the YMCA hires people all summer. Um, they hire a lot of, of those that are under 18 to do, to do those jobs. We also have folks, and, and each of those criteria, some of them are not necessarily paid either. Uh, volunteer fire companies have a lot of, of young people that want to get involved, want to work with their communities, which is a wonderful obligation and a capability for those kids to, to see how their fire folks and EMS help their communities. Um, but there are stipulations because they are not yet adults and, and we need to protect them and make sure that their hours are being complied with. And the issue is really just when they're, sh when they're in school, they have a certain threshold they have to or can, can't go over. And when they're out of school, summer, weekends, those types of things, they can't go over uh, certain different thresholds. And, and we just have a few seconds left, but would this bring Pennsylvania's law uh, up to date with the federal law? Yes, it is basically bringing it just in compliance with the feds. The businesses have a better understanding of where they can and cannot go. And it's better for the students as well because they understand what their thresholds are as well. Thank you very much. Thank Come you. back, give us an update. Let us know how it's progressing. Will do. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We've been talking with Pennsylvania State Representative Cheryl Delosier. I'm Jill Horner for Comcast Newsmakers.